If you lost your vision, would you develop super hearing like Daredevil? While we don't see a lot of blind people running around fighting crime, our brains are crazy powerful and are mind-blowingly good at adapting if we lose one of our senses. I'll break down three things in this video. One, exactly what makes the super hearing of blind people different from sighted people with functioning vision. Two, the real-life, daredevil-like echolocation training for people who lost their vision. And three, the different regions of the brain and how the connections between them transform if you lose a sense like vision. People who lose their vision early in life often have a very powerful sense of hearing, especially when it comes to tracking moving things around you based just off of sound. Imagine trying to cross a busy street without being able to see. That's terrifying. Researchers from the University of Washington used MRI tests to identify two key differences in the brains of blind people that give them this sonic tracking superpower. First of all, there's a region in the brain called HMT+. That's what lets people who can see follow around and track moving objects with their eyes. HMT+, isn't really involved in the hearing of people who have working vision. But for the patients in the study, the same region of the brain was super active as they were listening. This suggests that HMT Plus fulfills the same role for blind people, but only using the sounds they hear, helping them much more accurately hear where things are, what direction they're moving, and how fast they're moving. These studies also showed that blind patients can much more accurately tell apart different sound frequencies and recognize a certain sound frequency. So they'll be better at recognizing the sound of a certain car, a bird sound, or even a certain person's footsteps and they don't need to use as much of their brains to do these things compared to the subjects who could see trying to recognize the same sounds. But it's important to recognize that the blind patients who exhibited what we're talking about have been blind since they were really young. Our brains are always making new connections, but they do that so much more rapidly when we're kids. This ability to form new connections is called neuroplasticity. Someone who becomes blind later in life just has a little less neuroplasticity and is usually not quite as good at adapting to very accurately pick up and track things using just sound. Sorry, Daredevil. Hold up, though. This patient included two sight recovery patients. They were blind from infancy to adulthood, and then surgery restored their vision. For them, the HMT Plus region of their brain served a dual purpose, activating both as they were seeing and tracking something and as they were listening. So their brain adjusted and gave them more powerful vision as they were growing up without being able to see and maintained that ability after they were then later able to see. So those sight recovery patients are probably really good at spotting and tracking things moving around them because they have both vision and slightly super hearing. I have the studies I've been referencing and other sources talking about them in more detail linked in the description if you'd like to check them out to learn more. But now let's get into the real life echolocation training that's basically daredevil school. Orientation and mobility, or O&M training, involves learning either passive or active echolocation. Teachers of passive echolocation in O&M programs blindfold participants, have them walk down a sidewalk, and count the number of trees they passed. They could hear some sounds get quieter when by a tree, because it's blocking some of the ambient sounds, and they call these sound shadows. So passive echolocation is based on how sounds that are already in the environment change. Developing this skill further lets blind people have a general awareness of what's around them. But active echolocation is the thing that just straight up blows my mind. Active echolocation is like where whales or navy ships send out a special sound and determine where objects are based on how long it takes for that sound to come back to them and if that sound's been changed. Brian Bushway from the nonprofit Visioneers is a master echolocator that teaches students active echolocation using tongue clicks. He even rides bikes and navigates using these tongue clicks. Brian describes this as creating a fuzzy geometry map of what's around him. The echoes of the tongue clicks sound different based on the shape, texture, and distance away of the objects that they reflect off of. People who lose their vision are usually much better at learning this echolocation than sighted people, but anyone could really learn this. The brains of blind people are redirecting some of the resources that would normally be used to process sight to understanding these sounds better and processing them more efficiently. People who have gone through active echolocation training did MRI tests, and when they listened to their own tongue clicks, the parts of the brain that normally activate for vision were being activated. 
Doing the research for this video, I was blown away by how close the training that we're talking about is to actual Daredevil superhero abilities. But this stuff is real. I'll link to another great YouTube video by the Be Smart YouTube channel, all about this echolocation training and diving into it in more detail down in the description. But now let's pivot one more time and talk about the anatomy of your brain and how it processes signals from your different senses. Your brain is constantly picking up and processing signals from throughout your whole body with the help of different sensory nerve endings. The brain organizes this mess of signals by sending them to different areas called lobes. Your cerebrum is the biggest part of your brain and it has four lobes. The frontal lobe, which is the largest lobe and is located at the front of your brain, the parietal lobe, or the middle section, the temporal lobes, which are the sections on both sides of the brain, and the occipital lobe, or the back section. All of your five different senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, and taste, are all processed in different parts of your brain, and they have different sensory receptors. Touch is processed in the parietal lobe. Smell is processed by the olfactory cortex, which is in the temporal lobe. Sight is initially processed in the occipital lobe, but then other areas kick in and it's estimated that 30 to 40% of the brain's cortex is involved in processing vision. Hearing is processed by the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe. And finally, taste is processed in the insular cortex, which separates the frontal lobe and temporal lobes. From the time you're a little baby, your brain streamlines the process of creating these connections from your sensory nerve receptors to the different lobes in your brain we just talked about. You also build networks that connect and integrate these different areas. But if you lose one of your five senses or you're just born without it, that part of your brain that normally would process that doesn't just go unused. Lots of studies like the HMT plus one we talked about earlier show how your brain can forge these brand new pathways and enhance your remaining senses. And other senses besides your hearing might become a little super if you lose your sense of vision too, like smell or touch. Just think about blind people who read braille. They can feel the tiny bumps corresponding to the braille alphabet and accurately figure out what they're reading. I'll also link to a study in the Journal of Neuroscience about how people who have lost their vision perceive touch a lot faster than people who have functioning vision. And again, the superpower might be stronger if you were blind since you were little. So our brains can reallocate resources to enhance our other senses if we lose one of them, like sight. And since so much real estate in our brains is dedicated to processing vision, a lot of resources are freed up to maybe help in other areas if we lose our sight. And orientation and mobility training can even teach you how to map your surroundings with echolocation. Straight up daredevil. And that's it. All right, what other eye or glasses related topics would you like me to talk about? If you think of something cool, please let me know in a comment and subscribe to this channel if you found this video interesting. Thanks.